Hi, um, this is Myrna Loy of Black Bright News. And if this following story resonates with you and you have been racially profiled or you have experienced something similar, please send um, your story to me at blackbrightnews at gmail.com. Now, Dijon Joseph is six foot eight, very, very tall, a black man who's experienced racial profiling over and over again. And you can imagine his frustration. So I'm going to show you um, one video that's only a minute and a few seconds long. The other one is a bit longer, but it actually shows you um, how he has been racially profiled and the actual experience of the police harassing him or whatever you want to call it. OK, so the first one. Um, yeah. Hey, guys, how you doing? For those that don't know me, my name is Dijon Joseph. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for the love and the support that I've been getting from everyone. It means the world to me, honestly. The DMs, just the messages. It's kind of difficult to respond to everybody, but um, thank you, man. I really appreciate you. Me and my brother, we really appreciate your support. But my question is, how many times? It's crazy. How many times are we going to have to go through this with the police? When is it going to be over? Is my question. In 2014, I was arrested wrongfully for allegedly intimidating a police officer. And um, the funny thing about that situation is I was pursuing peace. There was an altercation and I was calming the situation down. The police officer came over and arrested me because I was the biggest, blackest guy there. Thank God for the CCTV. Thank God for it. The judge looked at the CCTV and said to the police officer, he's clearly pursuing peace. Could it be that you've arrested this man because of his stature? <laughs> Mad. Mad. I was found not guilty because I was not a hero. I'm not going to sell myself like that, but I was pursuing peace in the situation. In 2016, the police officer pulled me over and said that I was driving on the wrong side, speeding on the wrong side of the road to the point where he had to swerve to avoid a collision with me. That's reckless endangerment. That's, that's, that's reckless driving. That's, that's, that's endangering lives. There's so, so many crimes in that. But I got five points and a £650 fine because I didn't have CCTV. And then it was yesterday. Shaking my brother's hand on the high street and the police officer said it looked like a drug deal. Now listen to what they're saying. Listen carefully. I shook his hand and it looked like I exchanged something. If I exchanged anything with my brother, why would it look like drugs? What about it looks like drugs? I'll tell you exactly what it looks like drugs. My tracksuit that I was wearing at the time, my hair, my beard and my skin colour is what it looks like a drug deal. I was racially profiled along with my brother. If you, thank you for the for the for the um, for the vouching of our characters in the comments because anyone that knows me, my family, my brother, you know we are masters of our crafts. We are professionals. We don't we're not we, we, we actively stand to build our communities. Which is what our business models are about. It's what we do. We're we're business owners, it's what we do. We stand for our community, we build our community, we build people. But the police don't care about that. I'm consistently being profiled by the police, as well as other people, but this is me taking the first stand and I'm asking my people to stand with me, because this is not acceptable. My stature was a problem. I'm six foot eight. I'm a big black guy. My stature was a problem in the, first, in the case that, the first case I was arrested in 2014. In the video, I said, he said I was being aggressive. I said, I'm a big black guy. And he said, exactly. He said, exactly. Solidify the fact that I'm a big black guy. That's what makes me aggressive. I wasn't even moving. He accused me of he accused me of, of resisting arrest when I wasn't even moving. What was I being arrested for? What was I being detained for? Because you I exchanged something that looked suspicious. What looked suspicious about shaking somebody's hand? Stand with me. This will not stop until we stand. I'm honestly, I've been letting it go. But today I stand. Stand with me. Because it will continue to go on and we'll teach our children that it's okay for the police to come and do this to us. It's not okay. Stand with me. Yeah, that is that one. I do have another one afterwards. There is a protocol the police have to follow when they stop and search. The only problem with that is like any law, there's always a loophole. And the loophole is if it looks suspicious the police are allowed to stop and search. So all the other protocols about, you know, whether or not 
they show their ID or their warrant and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's just formalities. So the other um, video is where the um, arrest takes place. I'm not going to play too much of it because it's quite long. I might try to skip through some of it, but you'll get the gist of it within the first couple of minutes. Standing outside the Caribbean shop getting food and that's what she's saying to me, yeah? Alright, cool. Don't touch me, I told you already. Don't touch me, don't touch me. Don't touch me. I'm being detained for a drug search. That is mad. You're going to be cuffed. Why am I being cuffed? Why am I being cuffed? Why am I being cuffed? I'm not being aggressive. I'm not being aggressive. Why am I being cuffed? Why am I being cuffed? Why am I being cuffed? I'm not being aggressive. Why am I being cuffed? Because it's basically why I'm being cuffed. It's basically why I'm being cuffed. You're being aggressive. The thing is that I notice in that is that any, any change in intonation when you're a black person is seen as aggressive. I don't think that... Um, I don't think we realise it ourselves because that's the way we communicate. These officers obviously have no, had no cultural diversity training. They have no clue on how black people communicate. And I know not all black people communicate like that. But considering he's outside a shop waiting to go and buy food and he's shaking hands with his brother and then they come and arrest him because it looks like a drug search. OK, technically, it probably would have been better if he had just said, OK, search me, you know. And um, but I guess you get so peed off with it happening all the time, you get defensive and that defensiveness comes out in your tone. I'm not condoning the actions of the police and I'm just saying that, you know, how it can be construed by people who are fearful of you anyway. I mean, he's six foot eight, for Christ's sake. My God, he would be, he would be snapped up in America. He'd be in the basketball um, field. He'd be getting millions. But this isn't a joke. This is serious. This is his life. And he's constantly being profiled and the thing is what i find with the uk is that they force you to conform and if you don't conform you're a victim of harassment like supposing now he had a clean cut hair yet you know he didn't have those dreadlocks or those whatever they are the plaits he probably and he spoke with a soft voice they probably wouldn't have an issue they'd probably say oh sorry sir you know okay we'll let you get on but he's tall He's got the little dreadlocks, he's got a tone, and that's all it takes. It shouldn't be, but that's all it takes. It can be perceived as what it is. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I don't know how it ends because I can't see the move forward button. Let me see. No, I can't see the forward button because I wanted to see what the outcome was. I was going to... I was going to move it along, but hold on, I can move it along. So let's just see what happens here. You would know I was being aggressive. I'm not being aggressive. 